My fault. I was on the uh, on the blower, as we would say back in the UK, on the blower, which means the phone. And Eric was getting ready, and this is very very exciting. So what we do in our uh, produce like a pro is every week as oh my god, I have to hear myself twice. Um, <laughs> once is more than enough, as I'm sure you can agree. The um, So what we do every week in Produce Like a Pro is uh, inside of the Academy is we review mixes and we listen and we talk about it and they go on for a, a shortest one and a half hours, sometimes two and a half to three hours. Lots of fun. And then about maybe once a month, it's not air all the time, we do this. And what we do is we listen to original music by everybody and critique it. Wow. So who do we have today? We have Mark Becker. Mark, I've got to say, give a shout out to Mark. Where is it? I don't know. We got a pig nose from Mark for Christmas. Yay. It's okay, Eric. Um, Eric filmed it live on Instagram and then hit the wrong button. So it didn't stay, which was kind of a bummer because we did an unboxing and we thanked Mark Becker. And <coughs> I'm sorry, Mark. But yeah, we uh, we we uh, we messed up on that one. Sorry, so Mark. Eric's saying sorry, Mark. But Mark, thank you ever so much. So we now have a pig nose. So you might see that in a new video. Why not? Let's use it. Let's use it in some videos. Who do we have? We have Chris uh, Kersey. Hey, Chris. Hey, David Moore. Hey, Josh. Hey, Ricardo. Hey, Chris Corral. Um, hey, Al Acoustic. Hey, Jens. Roberto. Um, wow, it's going by fast. Trying to keep up. Frank. Todd. Hey, Todd. Hey, Josh. Hey, Estavo. Uh, Mac. Abel. Charlie. Benjamin. Wow. How are you all? This is all rather wonderful. So if you're new to Produce Like a Pro, this is the big part of what we do for the Academy is we don't just, you know, have 50, 60 multi-tracks in there and a bunch of lessons. There's a, there's a huge 18-hour free mastering course in there, uh, which we did a little taster of the other day, but there's a whole 18 hours on it. There is, um, there's loads of courses, but most importantly, actually not just most, like incredibly most importantly, there is the best community ever. And this is what you're seeing, all these thousands of people going, going by here. It's amazing. This community is incredible. And they're all, hey, Alberta, hey, Sean, hey, Josh, hey, Dougie, hey, uh, Jeff, hey, I can't keep up. James, Chris, Mass Minor, Adam, um, Sup, says Dave Benz, Sup. Uh, Harvey, uh, Harvey uh, Tom C, TFT Gear, uh, Magnus, hey, Magnus, how are you? Um, wow. Wow. Uh, Shaylee, Harmony Smurf, um, uh, Lawrence, Andre, Baz, Pete, John Case, Tyson, Jordan. I'm sure I'm going to miss people out. Marcel. Hey, Isabel. Hey, Doogie or Dougie. Um, that guy. Hey, that guy. Uh, the more the more I know, the less I know. Absolutely. All I know is I know nothing. Best way to be. You can't learn if you know everything already. Um Oh, Timothy just signed up. Wonderful. Marcus. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, wow. I can't keep up. Emra, Johnny, uh, Mo Moana. Um, Pez. <laughs> hey, Billy. Wow. This is fantastic. So thank you, everybody. Um, please hit the old good old like button. That always helps. If you hit the like button, it might help YouTube share it. Um, although we have got 400 plus people here. So what we're going to do is we're going to listen to productions by Produce Like a Pro members. So this is all Produce Like a Pro people. Eric at random picked 10 last night. I, um, so I'm excited to see what he picked. Looks like we have some truly lovely people in here. Um, some names I haven't, don't recognize. Some new people, which is always fantastic. And uh, yeah, let's get going. Now, what we do is we will go here and we'll read out, you know, any comments and questions. As you can see, for instance, um, this was just a couple of days ago. Um, yesterday, this was put up and there's already people commenting. How freaking awesome is that? Um, anyway, so Billy Bates says, I'm a solo artist from Scotland. Beautiful. Um, I joined Plap a few months ago. Since then, my mixing's improved a lot from being a beginner, thanks to the help of the kind Plap members. 
That's because we have an incredible community. The song was tough dynamically, as you will hear. I got some great tips from Chris Ibbotson, who's insanely talented and is there. Hey, Chris. On layering two kicks, as I have a problem with a kick coming through. I'm far from the level of most members here, but hey, that's why I'm here. Exactly. All right. Billy Bates. I haven't heard any of these, so this is going to be exciting. So I'm going to restart it because the muto market wasn't set properly. So you could hear me waffling on and tapping and all that kind of stuff. So one more time for Billy Bates. Here we go.
Absolutely love it. I, I think I've got that, uh, you know, I'm a rabbit in your headlights. You know, Tom York, uh, mid 90s, kind of mid to late 90s. Um, oh, absolutely beautiful. You know, uh, science, remember science fiction? Um, that was such a great, great record. record. That, I love this. Billy, I love your voice. I love this production. It is interesting because. You know, I think immediately when I hear something like this, I just think has to be in film and TV. You just have to get this in front of the right amount of people. Now, obviously, just one song is not is just the beginning. You're going to need at least an album's worth of material, which you may have. But that's what I hear when I hear this. I hear like I, I th this this is just it's so emotive, gives me so many ideas. It's just beautiful. Love the voice, love the song. Love the arrangement. Um, I never get bored of it, even though, you know, how long is it? It's it's not long, but it's four and a half minutes, close to. But it never gets boring because every element is interesting. The beautiful kind of modulating key sound. The, the, the programming is light, but really super interesting. Your voice is really compelling. I mean, Dang, you know, there's a lot of artists, major artists that would love to have tracks this beautiful. Uh, yeah, really, really impressed. Yeah, everybody's saying very cinematic. Um, yeah, great, great work, Billy. Uh, Billy, I'd be intrigued for you inside of the Academy um, to, to mix some other people's stuff. And, you know, what I always um, ask is, you know, could you make your multi-tracks available to other Academy members? That happens a lot in our Academy where people bring in bring in some of their own productions, their own songwriting, you know, own composition, and then let other people in the Academy either just mix it or add production elements. I think a lot of people would be very excited to get their hands on this and, like, add some other things. If you're, if you're uh, comfortable with that... Um, um yeah absolutely fantastic yeah what what an incredible start billy in scotland as you know i'm a have a very strong affinity with scotland i have a lot of scottish relatives beautiful absolutely incredible all right next up is nicholas jackson Nicholas says, hi, this song is called To The Lighthouse, the first song I mixed since discovering Warren's YouTube channel and then joining the Plappers. I posted this on Mrs. J's mainly jazz sound cloud site as she has a premium access. It's written and performed by me under the moniker of Hope and T, also my YouTube profile name, uh, FYA for Plappers. I usually um, use live drums, in, but lockdown, this was recorded, prevented that. It's old-fashioned, straight-ahead pop folk song featuring my first ever go-to on a mandolin, acoustic guitar, electric bass, flute, played by Mrs. J. We did our recorded percussion, and I bought uh, Remo Fiber Skin Tambourine for the job, which is my new, favorite new time. Recording Logic, drum samples of Logic Stock. Uh, love doing BVs, and a huge fan of Queen arrangements. Love that. Um, I use Warren's tip of using saturation on the BVs um, in the flute solo. Thanks, Warren. I mastered through Ozone 9, a fairly standard suggestion. Thanks again, Warren. Mix most mainly, most of it fairly dry, and choosing reverbs is something I find a bit bewildering. Yes, it is. All right, Nicholas Jackson. Very excited to hear this. Yeah. 
Wolf with blankets round my feet. When the storm was raging, I was reaching for the rail. I heard reason calling me, a voice that never failed. To the lighthouse, I'm reaching out. your peace It's not real It's only shadows playing on the floor Unexpected creaking through the door Imagine that your bed's within a brightly painted tower You can see for many miles beyond your dark around To the lighthouse I'm reaching out Rather fantastic, Nicholas. So it's very, very um, like early 70s. Lots of people referencing um, the Beatles. I was thinking sort of Wings meets sort of Mungo Jerry. Very early 70s, like 71, 72 period. It's got a little bit of a spillover from the 60s, but got like a 70s feel good um, thing about it. I, I really love it. It's, what's interesting is it's super authentic, meaning it actually feels like it could have been from that period. If somebody had said, oh, this is an old song from like 72 that I just found, I'm sure most of you would have been like, oh, really? That's cool. So it does, it does sort of make me feel like, Nicholas, this maybe the song's great. I love the performances, everything about it. I think it could use a little bit more energy in the track. Like when you get to the end here... By the way, I love I love the flute. I love I love a little bit of a prog element as well. Like it's got a little bit of a progressive rock thing in it. Not a lot. It's not like it's odd meter timing, but it's just got that kind of 
you know, King Crimson first record thing with the flute in it. It's just great. To the lighthouse, to the lighthouse. Like I love this to the to the lighthouse, this part here. But I feel like the energy of the track had come out. It feels like it's all just a little bit con contained. So the song's great. It's really authentic. It feels like that period. But I wonder if it could just be approached with like a 10% more modern um, mixing style. Just a little bit brighter, a little bit more aggressive when it's gone to the lighthouse. It's a bit more sing-along-y. Again, I think this would be a wonderful one to be able to share the multi-tracks, Nicholas, inside of the Academy so other people could maybe have a go. I think this is a, a good, this could be a good Chris Ibbotson kind of, uh, you know, see if he can make it a little bit more 21st century. Now, don't get me wrong. There are movies being made at the moment where, you know, it's a period thing of like late 60s through early 70s. And this could be in it because people would be like, you know, they could license this from you without having to spend half a million dollars on on an early 70s track. I mean, this is super poppy, super hooky, very authentic and really good. I just think to be just a bit more compelling and competitive in the 21st century, it needs a slightly more, slightly more aggressive modern mix. Chris said said he'd love to. If So, um, Nicholas, if you want to share the multitracks in the Academy, uh, yeah, that would be great. Uh, but Nicholas, great song, great production, very authentic, really, really super hooky. Loved it. All right, next up is John. Uh, looks like John Rosil. Yep, John Rosil. Uh, sorry, Rosley. Yep, sorry. John Rosley says, um, uh, this song was written by T uh, Troy from the McCoy brothers. It's the last mix done in, in the studio at Southwestern College, college under the mentorship of uh, Jay Henry. Jay was the audio and engineer, well known for work with uh, LL Cool J, Slick Rick, George Michael, just named a few. We tracked the session on Tuesday, March the 10th of 2020, and the mix was done on Thursday the 12th. We left the studio Thursday night, never to return because of the, the shutdown, of course. Tragically, Jay passed away a few weeks after this session. Oh, I'm very sad to hear that. Um, but excited to hear your song, John. Here we go. I lost my freedom as a young man When the devil he called on me He whispered a whiskey twist of words My wrongs I couldn't see Kicked my way in through the back door Cause I couldn't find my key Now she lays dead up in that bed I'd made With a man that wasn't me And for now I walk the line with no sunshine Do see sun it only makes me blind What a hell of a way to spend an eternity Shackles on heels, shackles on hands I sleep in with the things I've done No one's gonna trust me I can't go out with all my old friends Hell, that only led to trouble I can't stumble down that same old path Only left me seeing double or And I can't take back
Fantastic. Uh, so I, I've been watching the com- uh, comments go down. I, I love the song. Um, it's very authentic. I think the first person commented Johnny Cash, and I have to agree. It's It's got that Johnny Cash kind of thing. A couple of people were saying the snare was maybe a little dry. I would say a cup, uh, two things. Um, you know, um, I think two things is maybe just a little bit like plate- a room reverb on it. I know you were saying you can't go back to the mix. Um, you know, would we be to go back to, you know what I mean? To go back to the mix. Um, but if you've got the multi tracks and you can try this at home, I agree. Maybe a little bit of plate, a little bit of natural room, just so it feels like, you know, the way a song like that would have been recorded, which would have been everybody in the room. Sometimes even the mic and the singer in the room at the same time. And then the only other thing is just to make it just a little bit more compelling and modern is just, you know, getting a little bit of thump on the kick, just a little bit of low thump on there and just a little tiny bit more high passing on the bass, just a shade. I don't want this to sound like a modern kind of dog, 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 you know, kind of kick drum, but just a little bit more um down there. So you've got like 20 to 40, just a tiny bit, like push up the 60, but making sure that you're not bringing up too much 80 to 100 in the kick drum and just getting a bit more 40 in there, just so there's some low lows in there. Then getting the bass and just high passing a bit more aggressively around about 60 so there's a little bit more definition between the kick and the bass guitar now john mcbride when we were in uh, last year we were in blackbird came in and gave us a talk it's actually on um, youtube you can watch it and he talked about you know with uh, using a, a ribbon mic he put an rca ribbon in front of the kick drum and boost 50 on um you know on a um, api eq And I think that's somewhere, you know, that kind of thinking is very much that thump of those classic kind of records. So maybe if you can, you can open it up. And if you do have the API, you know, plugins, boost a bit of 50 in there. And then with something a bit more surgical, tuck a little bit of 80 out so the bass can bloom a little bit, just a bit out of the kick drum, and then just more aggressively get the 60. Now, I know, obviously, you don't have the access, John, to go back and recall the mix, you know, at the old studio, but it's a great song, and it would it would deserve that extra attention of opening it up on your own. Great. And again, if you want to share the multi-tracks inside of the Academy, that would be amazing. We get asked a lot about country, classic country, and a track like this would be lots of people would love to mix it. All right, next up. This is a song called Broke. It's by This is Eric Telford and uh, written by singer-songwriter Arkina Adderley. I had the pleasure of producing and mixing this. It was released as a single this past October. The song is a call to action for people to acknowledge their complicity in systems of oppression and a moral responsibility to actually engage this mantle of injustice. Um, Anita wrote this song with the hope it would inspire citizens in the U.S., especially those... Uh, okay. Production notes, all of the instruments are live, but I did use some kick and snare samples to sweeten the drum kit a bit. In the wall of sound section toward the end of the song, I used the vocal to sidechain a compressor to get more air in the lead vocal on the outro, more FODA. Um, the bass was recorded with just the DI, so I split it into two tracks and used one track for lows and the other tracks for the mids and the highs. All right, let's check it out.
Fantastic. It's a great song. Um, it's really authentic, really, like everybody's saying, kind of got a Motown, but I think more of a sort of 70s funky Motown R&B feel. Absolutely love it. Um, I think a lot of people are saying um, it could be more high mids, brighter, more aggressive in the mid range. And I do agree with that. But I do think one of the one of the biggest problems, and this is something that gets echoed a lot, is low end management. We talk about this a lot. Um, I will just for schnitz and sniggles, like, um, you know, carve up something here. So if we just take a section here. See the amount of 80 to 100 that's going on in there in the bass? There's the the problem is is there's there's, there's a massive drop off after about six k here. Well, five k even. Yeah, after about five k. But when I bring it up, there's a ring. You hear that ring? It's a great song and it's well recorded. I just think you could the the mix needs some more detail stuff going on, some more high mids in other instruments. There needs to be some clarity in the low end. So if you can get in there and, and just get a not boost just in the eighty to hundred area on the bass where it feels like it's really focused, but a little bit more control. That's where I feel like an MV two which is probably at the moment practically free with Wave Sale. The MMV2, there's always a link below. It's one of our favorite pr uh, plugins. Put that at the end of your bass chain and just squash the top end energy and the low end and bring it in and control it. It would be really, really, really good. And you've got the thump on the low end of the kick drum, but I'm not... It's clouded by the bass, so you're going to have to high pass a little bit more aggressively around about 60. I'm not talking about like this, but just if you, it sounds like you've got a gentle slope in there or there's a lot of boost going on. Just make it a bit more aggressive in there so the kick drum to, can breathe a little bit. And then find the attack on the kick drum and bring that up a bit, probably about 2.5 2K, just so there's some actual attack on it. I can't, you, a mastering engineer is not going to be able to open up that top end because you can hear the hi-hat click. You broke it. Yeah, that, it's very, it's not much I can do in there. So, you know, um, open up the instruments around that area just a little bit. You know, if you're low passing, either, you know, just soften that out and get a little bit more you know, there. So yeah, you could definitely have some low lows on the kick, a bit more sub energy going on, a bit of aggressive attack on that. Um, then with the bass controlling the 80 to 100 area, using the MV2 to stop notes getting carried away, and then a bit more aggressive high passing, and then open up Probably I'd go to a lot of these instruments if you're low passing, open them up a little bit more and just maybe just give some 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 lift. Gentle, just a little bit of lift, just so there's something going on in there. It's just not quite there. But production wise, you know, music, uh, instrument wise, musicianship, it's really, 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 really good. Uh, wonderful. Um, okay, next up is Raimondo. And Raimondo says, I hope all is well and that each of you is doing excellent. I'm a new member and I'm, I'm excited to show you one of my songs called El Rey. It's a freestyle rap in Spanish. I'm from Nicaragua. Uh, produced by my friend Vinay from California. The track was recorded in my living room in a 57, handheld it late, mixed it myself, and I would like some constructive critique of how it can be improved performance-wide mixing, etc. Very excited to hear. Here we go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hit it. Ah. Como? Dímelo de nuevo, nena. Oh yeah. Ah. Estoy a punto de hacer el amor al micrófono. Con dinero y sin dinero siempre hago lo que quiero. En las calles soy primero. Me dicen un callejero, aunque siempre soy sincero. Nunca digo la verdad. Verdad, ajá. Uh -huh. Para poder entender toda esta 
mierda que yo hago Tienen que nacer en esa tierra de volcanes y del lago Yo te miro desde lejos, como digo, te go See you later, te veo luego He vivido mi pobreza y ahora tengo mi riqueza Me refiero a mi amigo, mi familia, mi dureza Todo lo que dice esa mierda no interesa ¿Qué pasó? Igual puta, yo soy Nicaragua No te pongas tensa, mami, saca tu paraguas Ando bajo el agua, arriba de las nubes Solo por Diosito es que me pongo de rodillas Solo es mi nena la que me hace cosquilla ¿Qué más puedo yo pedir? Que mi vida es sencilla Me gusta el barbecue, el bacanal y una fría no le cuentes a tu tía que estuvimos en su casa y lo hicimos hasta en la silla Me disculpo madre mía porque nadie pensaría que tú llegarías a estar más buena que la propia Rosalía Ustedes se tiran en contra mí, se tira en un abismo Cuando yo rapeo eso se siente como un sismo Yo no pierdo ritmo, ustedes pierden rima No tienen autoestima, por eso se lastiman el mero mero yo soy, el pelotero yo soy Ay cabrones, me han llegado bendiciones De diamante, de platino y de oro Así que dejo que cante el coro En mi mundo no hay ley, no hay chile, no hay rey Yo sigo siendo el rey, nadie me quite no güey En mi mundo no hay ley, no hay chile, no hay rey Yo sigo siendo el rey, nadie me quite no güey Wow, it's really, really cool. It's very cool. Uh, lots of different commentary. I'm reading everything going down and making notes. Uh, I really, really enjoy it. I, it's an interesting one because, yes, yeah, so quite a few people have commented about maybe the, the vocal being a little too high past. It's tough because in this genre, a lot of the stuff is really kind of mid-rangey and cutting. Um, especially when the tracks are very dense. You know, if it's really heavily dense production, you do have to have that vocal kind of cutting. But I think in this one, there's enough space to get a little bit more lows in the vocal. So I agree, maybe maybe just dial in a little bit more on the 200, 220, where there's a bit more body in the vocal, it's even just artificially boosting um, doing it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I I feel like... That's the main thing for me, just a bit more body in it. I A couple of people said they didn't feel like an interaction with the track. And, you know, that that may be, that, that, there may be a little bit of that. I feel like um, probably for me, delays might work a little bit. That's just me. I'm not a mixer, uh, particularly of a ton of this kind of material, but I do know when I enjoy it, a little bit of delay stuff can make it feel like it's connected a little bit more with the track because the moment it's like super dry and then there's a track. So dry vocals, track, dry It needs just a little bit more to glue it together. So I do agree with that. I think a bit more body on the vocal and a bit more glue into it. You know what I mean? Great work. And... Uh, Raimondo, if you're down, I'd love to have those multi-tracks available for Academy members. It would be incredible for them to be able to mix it as well and put some stuff in there. Do I like analog or digital more? And what, would you ever make a video about the dead Kennedys? I probably would, yeah. You know, you know, uh, uh, DH Peligro is a very good old friend of mine. I've known DH for 20 years. And I also um, mixed one of his solo records, one of the DH Peligro solo records. Um, so, wow, this is a lot of fun. Uh, 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 Ryan is up next. Really excited about this one. Mix uh, just finished for a client's album. Fell in love with the trap because of stellar harmonic harmonica solo on the back half. Very Stevie Wonder. Most of the album features modern new disco production, so our goal was to have it 
Uh, drums very upfront and dry, especially the beginning of the track to fit the rest of the album. The back half of the short tune of harmonica solo opens up with more of a steely down kind of hi-fi sound. By the way, we are eclectic here. You can tell we're super eclectic. We've got like a Tom York sounding track at the beginning, very Radiohead, very atmospheric. We just had some Spanish style rap. We had a Johnny Cash style song. We had a 70s feel good wing style track. We are eclectic. And now we're having mentioning of Stevie Wonder and... Um, Stevie Wonder and Steely Dan. Premaster will be master separate engineer, so no real loudness processing besides bringing in level for um, listening purposes. Um, already working on a f um, few more mixes for this client. Wonderful. Here we go. And this is Ryan with Interlude. Really nice, Ryan. Fantastic work. Um, yeah, I agree. There's a lot of great points going on. I, I agree. I think the kick could sound ever so slightly more modern, just a little bit more attack on it. It seems to have a little bit too much hundred in it for me. Um, I feel like the bass is a fantastic sound, but you're using volume. It's pushed up maybe mm, about half or a dB too loud to kind of like get the groove going. So I'd maybe get a little bit more low lows on the kick, a little bit of 80 to 100 cut cut from that kick drum, from that bass drum, cut it in there so that the bass can breathe more without having to have the extra dB of volume. So tuck the, deep, tuck the bass down a dB, cut out some of that 80 to 100 out of the kick drum, boost some 60 on that kick drum, find the attack on the kick, probably somewhere between 2.5 and 5, I'd start with 2.5, boost that ever so slightly and then you'll get more emphasis and feel on the kick drum and then the other thing is it's like yes it, it is a matter of taste but i do agree i do hear a lot of tuning on the vocal um where everything else feels super organic and like so it's a little bit and i know it's modern to have things you know tuned um but it's an interesting juxtaposition that the band sounds super organic and real and it's sort of got Stevie Wonder, dare I say, maybe more Jamiroquai, but Stevie Wonder influence when you hear the harmonica. And you've got all those things, you know, which are fantastic, but then the vocal doesn't have the same kind of feel because the vocal doesn't feel like a, so much of a performance and more, a little bit more manipulated. Look, this is so much a matter of taste, but, you know, 
I know it's more modern to have things more tuned. Everything on the radio, everything is tuned. And sometimes it's obvious and sometimes it's subtle and sometimes it's somewhere in between where, you know, a trained ear can hear it. So I do get that and I understand. And it's definitely, I'm not the guy that says don't tune things. I think you have to do what you have to do to make great, great music. But for me, I might want to back it off a little bit. If it was my project, I'd probably back off the tuning a little bit. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're mixing it and you're supplied this, that's what you're given. And that's the reality, you know. So we have to remember this as professionals, as mixers, we mix what we're given. And we do the best possible job we can. All right, next up. Great work, though. Great track. Again, you know, I know it's a, it's a, a probably something you're not able to have access to, but I'd love, you know, um, you know, just a, just a little, you know, maybe a little, yeah. If, if you can get these multi-tracks for other people to mix, but I do know it's a, a difficult kind of situation when you're dealing with paid, paid work, you know, they probably don't want their multi-tracks available, but if they could be great. Next up is Dainty Summer. Uh, Dainty says, hi there, Pleppers. Love being here and have gained some great help and confidence while mixing and songwriting. Wonderful. I have a plug-in addiction for trying to tame that. I hear you. Um, they're all so cheap. Black Friday was insane. Yes, it was. Anyway, here we go. The song is called Boy, Man, uh, Boyish Man. I'm thinking of uh, Muddy Waters' Manish Boy. Mixed in the box. Uh, all guitar tones are from Logic X. Thanks a million. Really hooked on mixing and producing. Love it. Love the Academy. All the help here is insane. Thanks again. Dainty Summer. Okay, great. Look forward to hearing this. Wow, an absolutely fantastic song. I love I love the quality of musicianship we have in here as well. Dainty Summers, absolutely fantastic. Great song, great production, great playing. Okay, 
Are you using impulse responses on the guitars? Uh, it, it's it's got that sort of digital, you know, in the box um, guitar sound, and the way to get around that is to use impulse responses. Just um, you know, once you get a, a, a an impulse response of a real speaker, as a vintage thirty or something like that, it will take that edge off. If you listen at the front here. It's just got that, just that little bite of the emulation. Now, I know, I know a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of emulations have IRs in them. I, I'm, I'm a snob with impulse responses. I have my own impulse responses. We did, uh, we did my Marshall, you know, which was Vivian Campbell's. So I have Vivian Campbell's head and cab um, from, it's, you know, it's the head from, I think it's a Mark II. JMP Master Volume, so it'd be about 78, 79, something like that. Nobody else know? So we have that and the cab, and that cab has the has the original, not they weren't called vintage 30s, they're 30s. It has the original, you know, speakers in there. And it it just sounds phenomenal. So I I I basically got emulations of that. And I put that on a lot of these guitar sounds, and it really, really helps. So I don't know, there should be a Lancaster my things down there somewhere are they down there no nope. <laughs> oh well <laughs> sorry about that but anyway get a really good impulse response on there and just get rid of that high-end sort of digital thing that will completely change it i'm sure all of their um you can add your own irs to amplitude 5 it's not out yet though is it i was just talking to them this morning about it um but yeah but once, yeah, once you do that, that's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Um, anyway, that's number one. Just get that edge off the guitar. It's the first thing that strike, strike me. And then, of course, the other thing is just getting those drums up. I think what you should do is mute your guitars and get the drums massive. Mix these drums so they are absolutely massive and rocking. Then bring in these guitars around it. So it's not just the energy of the guitars, which sound phenomenal. Really well played, great parts. Very Hendrix, very Sabbath at times, very everything. Just really good but let's get this so that the um so that the guitars have the energy but not at the expense of the drums if you can get these drums massive like huge pumping kicks and snares your guitars have got so much energy that you could bring them out um you know around it and you would have something incredible now with the vocal i would mess it up a bit i would put like a dirty slap delay on there and just make it more authentic you know just give it some pizzazz so big rock drums mix the drums mute the guitars mix those drums get them massive bring the guitars up on the guitars use some impulse responses to get rid of the edge on it and then on the vocal dirty it up give it some aggression put some slap on it and i think you'll have something freaking amazing because you get that mix mix right then people are going to hear your guitars because at the moment, you're a great guitar player with fantastic ideas, but because the mix is out of whack, I'm not reading I'm not reading the comments that I should be reading, where people should be going, wow, what a great performance. This is a great song. I love the guitar playing. Everybody's focused on the things that are out of whack. They should be focused on your great guitar playing and your great songwriting. Um, but Dainty Summer, great work, and thanks ever so much. And if you can, put the multi-track up, up here so people can hear them. Um... And mess with them and do other mixes. All right, next up is Robert Lan Lanter. Hey, Robert. Robert says, thoughtful <coughs> original rock song. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and he lists everybody here. Dave Foreman, Lee Vocal, Laura McMillan, uh, Girl Vocal, uh, Background Vocals, Dave, Rob. Rob sang on it, Laura. <coughs> Bass, Paul um, Averunton, um Rob himself played acoustic and electric guitars. He programmed the drums and the keys and arrangement and mixed and mastered. And he wrote the music and Dave wrote the lyrics. Fantastic. Excited to hear it, Rob. Price is 
How far must one go to save a thing they really love? To stop their world crashing down, falling on my blade. It's an even trade. Get what you want. Mm-hmm. We get what we need. What makes one a hero? And how much must they lose? When it comes down to the bitter, how is it they choose? Falling on my blade, it's an even trade. You get what you. That you can't make 
I really enjoy it. Um, first of all, great acoustic guitar playing. The musicianship is really wonderful on this. I think uh, I'm reading all the comments. I'm listening to track. I'm making notes. For me, I think ultimately um, it it needs – there's two solutions for it for me. Either, number one, it has to speed up. So it's just – moves a little bit more that would be the quick and easy way of making this work for me in in a way the other thing is it needs some kind of like percussive or elements that make it you know because at the moment it's you know it feels a little labored on the chord sequence it's a beautiful chord sequence at what price is courage valued How far must one go? It's a little lispy. It could be um, some DSing that, that that's overdone in the wrong frequency. To save a thing they really love. So it's either biting or it's or it's lisping a little bit. So you might want to back off um, the DSing and refocus it. Oak Sound is the plugin that will solve it, but it's not cheap. But it is an amazing plugin. To save a thing they really. Stop their world crashing down Falling on my blade So you've got a little bit of movement here You know, if that was going on How far must one go? If it had that kind of movement as an arpeggio rolling through it, that would really help. Maybe keep the acoustic guitar, but put a piano going. That could move it. Or it's simply speeding up the song. But I think it, I think an arpeggiated piano would really, really help. I think uh, a shaker. I like thick tambourines. Like a... Just something that helps it move. It needs something to make it move along a little bit. This beautiful chord sequence. I like the melody. I think the vocal needs a bit more mixing. Um, Peter, who's always super smart and got great ideas, says um, could be good with a Roly. Uh, a, sorry, a Whirly or a Rhodes. That's a Rhodes and a Whirly together. A Roly. Um, I think um, like a Rhodes playing an arpeggiated movement could help. Um, but I also understand what he's pointing to is some maybe some low mids. It does does lack a little bit of girth, even at the end. Oh, we get what we need. I think Rhodes padded tremolo keys here. We get what we need. So I agree. Low mid instruments, something to thicken it up. Rhodes or Whirly would be beautiful. Something either tempo actually speeding up the song or something with continuous movement like a arpeggiated piano or something like that. You could do it with an acoustic guitar, but I feel like there's already a lot of acoustics on it. So either speed the song up or give me something that moves to kind of help the momentum keep it along. Also, shakers, tambourines could be really nice, lightly in there. Just keep this movement going the whole time. I mean, it's a great, it's a great song. It's really, really well written, um, and it's very well performed. It's beautifully done. I mean, you guys have written a beautiful song. I think just the production needs some work. It needs low mids, fullness. It needs something to kind of may help it move, or frankly, just upping the tempo probably about... 8 BPM, starting with about 8 PM would, BPM would really, really help. But I do love the song. Oh, and the vocal. You've got to get in there and figure out what's going on with the DSing in there, what's what's giving us that kind of stuff. But it is a great, great work on the song. I do have to use the bathroom, so I'm wondering if Eric is uh, on his Ericam and can tell us a joke. Uh, and please hit the like button and share if you haven't already. Please hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. There's 900 people watching. That's amazing. Amazing. Thank you, everyone. I'm actually going to show them a bit on these, uh, submitting for these kind of things. And All right, that's good. Show them about the site. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Beautiful you. Yeah. Being productive.
What's up, everyone? Uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Eric. I am behind the scenes trying to get this all going and making sure nothing's messing up, which things just happen. And you just got to go with the flow. Um, so some of you guys ask where we where you guys submit, how submissions are done. Um, <laughs> Eric's a face. Yes, I am. My glasses keep getting all fogged up. Uh, so submissions, these are, these are done by the, the, the Academy. We do this every Friday, feedback Friday inside of the Academy privately for just the Academy members. Occasionally we'll do these, uh, live on, on YouTube, just to show you guys like what, what we do inside the Academy. This is just one of the many things we do. Um, so every Friday we, we, we have about maybe by now, maybe over 60 multi-tracks that we've given out and we keep adding more and more. Uh, so every Friday we review mixes off of those multi-tracks. Then the occasional Wednesday, we do uh, feedback Wednesday originals, which is this basically. Today's Friday, but it's the same idea on a Wednesday and people, uh, members will just submit their originals. I'll go in there and I'll grab them and I am grabbing them by random. I'm just clicking through and just throwing them in there. Um, and yeah, I, we, we do get a lot of submissions. Not everyone, we don't get to everyone cause we only do 10 a week. And if we have made 50 submissions a week, it, it's, I try my best to get someone different each time, uh, make sure we're not having back people come in back to back weeks. But anyways, let's jump over here. I'll show you guys real quick. This is the Academy page. When you get in there, don't look at my password, even though it's all crossed out. Uh, when you get in there, this is behind the scenes stuff for the page. Ignore that, blah, blah, blah. This is what you see when you sign in. We have downloads, we have full courses, and in the courses we have, you know, we have our, our new uh, Ultimate Guide to Mastery and Warren Sokol. He's doing that. We're releasing an episode every Wednesday right now. Uh, we've got a, a total of uh, 13 episodes in the bank, and it total, it could be, I think it's, oh, uh, it's 20 plus hours. We have a bunch of courses in there, um, but yeah, this is besides the point. Let's get to the Feedback Friday stuff. Um, yes, so in the forum, when you go to the forum, and even though there's a box there that says Feedback Friday, that's just to see uh, previous episodes. We post them in there. <laughs> it's a short password. It is. It's my special password. I've had it since I was maybe like 12 years old. Um, so within the forum, go to Feedback. There's tons of other things in the forums you can see competitions uh analog recording people go in there and they they discuss amongst each other ask each other questions help each other out uh, a big thing about it is the community that's based around this uh, of everyone coming together uh we also have a live chat in the bottom right which you know you can talk to anyone you want that's in their life but we have 2020 mixes 2019 mixes we have mixes that are from 2018 17 uh we've been I forget how old Producer like Pro is now because it's it's been around for a bit. Uh, but we have mixes that have been from the very beginning. And those are all available. Again, there's like plus 60 mixes now. Uh, you guys could download all the mix, all the multi-tracks. There's, I think every, every, sing, every single mix has a lesson accompanied with it where it's a mix breakdown. What else? What else? I don't know. You can, you can keep going. <laughs> so... Once you click on, just to show you guys, click on one of these, a date, uh, it loads. You'll have your selection of mixes to choose from. So right here we have, you know, Ron Lee, who do you think you are? We were astronauts. We have all that. Uh, or these are, these are, this is actually, sorry. This is where you would submit your mixes for, uh, for everyone else to review and, and, uh, give feedback. And then down here in the topic section, Every week we have a topic we'll put up. Like right here, you can see uh, 2020, December 4th, Originals. Um, within that topic, this is where everyone submits their mixes. There's seven pages, seven plus pages of people submitting their mixes. And this is where I grab your guys' mixes from. Um, yeah, once I grab the 10 mixes off of that, the rest is me just prepping it. If you go to here to the multi-tracks, this is where you download the multi-tracks. We have them organized into, into seasons. We have 20 seasons right now. I think there's about four 
four or five multi-tracks each season for. Yeah, these are all the multi-tracks you can get. And then members that want to submit their own multi-tracks, we have them down here in member uploads. When you go to member uploads, you have access to, these are all multi-tracks, remixes, uh, tracks that members just want to make available to everyone else, to the Academy. You can hear, you can listen to what their track is, what the remix is, and you have the option of downloading the multi-track. Some of them have even made their own videos of breaking down the multi-tracks and how they did the mix, uh, how they recorded it, mastered. So that's all available. And yeah, that is just a really quick, just run through a whole Feedback Friday thing. Where I grab my stuff, uh, the multi-track, well, where I grab the mixes for, for Feedback Friday where you guys can submit it, where you guys can download the multi-tracks. For those that aren't a part of the Academy, this is just a quick insight of one of the many things that we do inside the Academy that is available to all you guys. But yeah, that's my spiel. Typically on these, I tell a joke because I don't know what else to do. But right now I thought because I see these questions, I could just quickly hop on here and just answer this and just give, a, give some more insight on that. That being said, I think I am good to go, Warren. We are good to do this. Are we ready? Are we ready to go back to metal? We are ready to go back to metal. Ooh. I need to get eight. Oh, I can use. Is this charged? Yeah, you can use that. Okay, great. The wonders of uh, of, of Apple products, and I don't want to get into a long discussion of Apple versus PCs, but always trying to find somewhere to charge. <laughs> wow it's 900 people here it's amazing you guys and girls are incredible um sorry oh well, this is i plugged in my phone to the computer to charge it and then all these things started opening up all right marvelous um so please hit the like button that would be absolutely amazing i'd really really appreciate it only two more to go um, this has been a wonderful time. I love being able to do this live. We do it. Uh, uh, Royal Radio says, give Eric a raise. Is that your pseudonym? <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Eric is. Uh... <laughs> Eric's I like, got a proxy out there. Just uh, How did you end up hiring Eric Warren? How did I end up hiring you? Uh, God, you should tell him because you applied for how many internships? Like 15? 15. And how many people responded to you? <laughs> Just you. Just me. That's how we got hired. I try to respond to everybody. I There are hundreds of instances where I've missed emails, missed um, missed um, comments. But you, you know I try the, my best to respond to everybody. Um, whether you comment under a video or you send me an email. Now, that doesn't mean that I get everybody. There are only... 24 hours in a day. I wish there was 240 hours in a day. I would do, um, you know, it's, yeah, I wish there were more hours in the day. So if I've missed a message from any of you, all I can say is if anybody here, if you've written to me and I haven't responded, just, just give me another one. Yeah. You know, give me another chance. Email me back. Sometimes it falls through the crack and it's not on purpose i i go back and sometimes see messages that i missed from two years ago and i get embarrassed because they're from people that are truly genuinely been helped out and are leaving me beautiful messages and i missed it beautiful emails i missed and i feel so bad because i do this because i love people and i love hanging out with people and i love a sense of community i'm not you know to me it's like that's a differentiator with youtube YouTube is like the guys and girls that have YouTube channels all about themselves and don't interact. They don't answer comments. They don't get involved. I don't get that. I, I, I'm like, I didn't want that. I wanted to have a community that we can all help each other out. That's what I wanted, you know? Um, so for me, it's like, that's what makes this so incredible that we get to interact with everybody. So I really, really appreciate it. Um, absolutely amazing. Oh, it looks like somebody bought you lunch, Eric. Oh, uh, what is what is two hundred DKK? That is thirty two dollars and sixty two cents. Wow. Thank you very much. Buy Eric lunch. Woo! The Buy Eric Lunch Fund. All right. Am I buying you lunch anyway? Are you getting lunch from the same place as me? I am getting the same. 
life from the same place. All right. Next well, tell, tell, tell them I'm buying. So, so you'd have to pay for it. There you go. Cause that will go to me and I'll buy your lunch. There you go. We're getting uh, food from the cat and fiddle, which is a British style pub. So I'm getting a British breakfast for my lunch. Uh, what do you say for Formula One? What do I say for Formula One? What do you mean? I love Formula One. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I haven't changed much, even though I've been in in America for quite a few years now. I mean, obviously, I travel backwards, back home, and backwards and forwards. But I still love Formula One. Still love cricket. Still love rugby. Still love field hockey. Um, you know, I still love all the things I loved as a kid. Uh, doesn't really change. Favorite band still Queen. You know, what can I say? Um, all right. <laughs> Next up is Gilberto, uh, Gilberto Alves, and he says, hello, everyone. I'm Gilberto from Brazil. I'm really glad to meet you all. It's my first submission. First song I produced, actually, wonderful. Uh, I did everything on myself. Um, very long, difficult struggle. Enjoyed the painful experience of making my sound professional. It took me four months, which is to say how in inexperienced I am and how complex the song is. He says, sorry, it's more about his inexperience than the complexity. I've watched every plat video in the process to help get in vocal recording and mixing, low end issues, muddiness. Um, I use what I could afford, Logic Pro X, virtual instruments and samplers, SM58, Behringer 202 interface, Isotope, Ozone 3 for mastering. The song was released on Spotify and YouTube, and I'm really proud of it. I'd appreciate your feedback to learn and do better next time. Very exciting. What a wonderful story. You see, this is why we do it. You know, when I talk about wanting, you know, being a people person, there you go. Somebody spent four months on their first ever song and production. Go Gilberto. Wonderful. Very excited.
Fantastic. I, look, for a first song, it's absolutely superb. That's what I love about this place. It's just we get to hear these kind of stories and people are just absolutely beautiful. I love this. It really, really great. Great vocals. I love this section here when it came in. And I've always been a fan of Portuguese. Um, it's a beautiful language when sung. Um, you know, I, I had many, um, I've yet to go to Brazil, so, but I've been to Portugal many times. Uh, it was a favorite place of mine in my 20s when I lived, still lived in the UK. Would go there all the time. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, so yeah, Portuguese sung is, uh, is wonderful. Yeah, you're definitely getting a little aggressive on the um, compression and limiting here. Um, you can hear it. It gets a little, a little slammed sounding. And, but in general, I just love the creativity. It's one of those songs, Gilberto, that if you could share the multitracks in the academy, I think other people could mix it and you could get a lot of input, like really heavy input of people like getting in there and talking about stuff. I love these little guitar parts. Again, a little bit high midly. Try, uh, if, try putting impulse responses on it or a different impulse response. Poesia do tempo de um rio que não flui. A patadas assim está tudo a ruir. Travessia em mim sem os traços de giro. Poesia do tempo. I mean, I like the brightness of that guitar. I think it makes sense, but I do a little bit less three to five and a little bit more mids, a bit more one, one, five. So it's a bit more honky in it. Get it, get it, get it. Yeah, a DS on the guitar can do it, but I think an impulse response would really help. Greg just bought you a can of Coke for 99 cents. <laughs> I, I, I really like it. I, you know, it's it's really important to me when you've got young artists that are coming in and like this is his first ever production to be massively supportive. And if this was my first production, I'd be very happy. My first production was not anywhere near like this. It was a disaster. So really great start. I, I can understand why it took so long. I think just get that guitar, um, you know, tame down those high mid brightness. Let, relax the high passing a bit, make it a bit more about the mid range because I think it would poke a little bit more. Um, it's really nice. C check the compression and the limiting overall so there's a bit more breathing, a bit more breath to it because at the moment it feels a little like it just kind of hits and, and stays there. And just in general, <coughs> let's let's get in there and talk about this inside of the academy. I think there could be a lot, a lot of input you can get from others. If you can share the multi-tracks, I think people would really love to help. Great work, Gilberto. Love, I love having people come in and, and do their first work with us. It really means a lot. It shows just how safe a place it is. It can be out here in the wonderful world of YouTube. Not quite so safe. You'll get a little bit of trolling in the wonderful world of YouTube, but inside the academy... Nobody's there to try and put other, other people down. It's all very, very supportive. So please come and join us. All right. We have 800 people left. Wow. Benjamin um, just bought you a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it's a unicorn. Uh, thank you, Benjamin, for the unicorn. Um, my daughter's six loves unicorns. So, um, but I think, you know, that's definitely for Eric. Eric, you got a unicorn. That's my vibe, right? That's exactly, yeah, you know. When it, when he was uh, going out um, when he was going out with uh, Izzy, we used to call, call them, uh, you know how like girls and guys, they get like a name. We used to call them Izzyka, Izzyka. So it was like Erica and Izzy. 
So yeah, he's he, he definitely has a a a penchant, a penchant. Uh, he has a penchant for uh, uh, for um, for the lovely um, join us, says Mike Mike Bembo. Yes, join us. Uh, wonderful. Yes, he does love his unicorns. All right, we won't talk too much about you. All right, last but definitely no means least is Bruno. Bruno says, hi, all this song was done completely by me, other than the lead vocals, which were done by my brother. So it's so hard to make sure I'm music, but I gave it a shot. Feedback would be greatly appreciated. Thanks. I love Mark's suggestions, and I went and gave it a shot. Here's the revision to the song. All right, last but no means least is Bruno. Here we go. I'd follow you Here I'm standing miles away Lost my soul along the way Seasons pass and times they change I love the drums on this. See, I, I, it's very kind of fray. <laughs> you know, I've always, uh, people know that I've, I've got a soft spot for the uh, the kind of Tom Petty snare a la Shelly Yakus, which is like a bit of body, a bit of pa, pa, 
tap, but a bit of like tubbiness to it. I love it. It doesn't have to be on every song, but you've got a great drum sound here. The snare does tend to get a little lost at the end. The kick could do with a, like, a little bit more attack at times. But generally speaking, I love this kind of drum sound. Huge fan, like really, really, really great stuff. Um, you know, I really... Yeah, I love it. And a beautiful song, you know, beautiful song. I love those da -da 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 backgrounds that come in on the end there. Just gorgeous. Very, very impressed. Yeah, good good work. Uh, what a lovely way to finish off. I feel like, Bruno, if you can make those multi-tracks available inside the Academy, I know there's a lot of people would love to mix this. Um, I think that this is right up a lot of people's alleys. Wow, what, this has been insane. This has been so good. Please hit the like button. There's 800 people watching. It would be incredible if you hit the like. And I just dropped something on the ground. Oh, my phone. Maybe it's smashed. I don't know. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Did Warren smash his phone? No, but it's probably pretty much on its last legs. <laughs> it got disconnected from here. Uh, whatever. All right, I'll leave it disconnected. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> this has been amazing thank you ever so much what thank you everybody that mixes the tracks that we supply brings their own tracks then shares them with other people and then inside of the academy helps each other out it's absolutely incredible if you haven't joined the academy join us it's at a ridiculously low price at the moment you'll get a free year's uh membership um and wow um do I like Portugal? Oh, no, I love Portugal. Two of my best holidays I've ever had were both in Portugal. Um, I remember staying in the uh, Sagres in uh, the Algarve, and I absolutely loved it. Um, I did a, a residency there at a nightclub, and it was crazy. We used to play from 11 till 2, and then we'd go out from 2 till 4 afterwards. Crazy times. But I loved it. Portugal is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And uh, But I haven't been to Brazil yet. Really want to go to Brazil. And I'm sure it will happen one day. Thank you, everybody. Join the Academy if you haven't already. Please click, um, you know, like, share, all of those great things. I really appreciate all of you. You, you, you absolutely rock. And uh, we'll do another one of these soon. So long, farewell, au revoir, au revoir, adios. Um, adios. And... Uh, Goodbye.